Every React tutorial I've seen on YouTube is either too theoretical or is not covering all existing methods. Even as a person who's working in this area, after watching those videos, I'm like, okay, but why you are explaining it so complicated? If I was someone who just wanted to start, this was not something I could understand. So I decided to make this video for you guys to cover every existing methods for the rag, simple and straightforward. After this video, I promise you, you would be able to build your own rag pipeline. Let's start with the oldest and the simplest rag method, which is naive rag. I remember I learned about naive rag somewhere around 2023 and I was like, this is interesting because I was able to fill this gap that LLM couldn't answer me on a specific domain by adding some external knowledge to my LLM. And the way that you do this is really simple and straightforward. You have some documents, it can be research papers, it can be like some books, anything that you want. And you can chunk them and you save them into vector store. And this vector store, usually what I use is pinecone because it's really fast when it comes to large scale similarity search and also face. These two vector stores are something that I really suggest if you want to go with them. Just keep it in mind that if you want to have a good accuracy for your naive rag system, you need to choose the chunk size and chunk overlap correctly. So probably you're going to ask me that, okay, so this is a rag system. Why we need to switch our method? There is one main problem in naive rag, and that is lack of relevant information. When you use naive rag, LLM is just using cosine similarity to search among all those chunks and return chunks that has the highest similarity score to the context window and then respond you based on that information that's retrieved from the vector store. But what if the actual response that I expect exists in the chunk 4 but the LLM because it's using the cosine similarity it's just returning chunk 1 and 2 to the context window. Chunk 4 has some relation with the chunk 2, but we don't understand that. We cannot understand this relation. So we missed that response and LLM will hallucinate. This problem push us to use GraphRag. GraphRag solved this problem by allowing us to define relationship between chunks. So what we need to do is to take an unstructured document, a book, research paper, a legal document, and turn them to a structured document. Then ingest that structured document to the knowledge graph with all the nodes and relationship that we defined manually. Then when you ask a question, LLM retrieve the most related chunks to your query with all the nodes and relationship around those chunks. Those information will be added to the context window and LLM generate the final response based on that information. And if you're curious to know how to build a graph rag, I have a video here for you that you can watch it. I explain everything step by step how to build a graph rag from scratch using Neo4j. After watching that video, you can build your own knowledge graph. However, graph rag has its own limitation. The first and the most important one, which you probably already noticed, is turning on a structured document to a structured document manually. This can take a lot of time. And the second problem is all those redundant information which probably you don't need and they are going to be passed to your context window. So we need a solution for this. What is that solution? Lightrack. Lightrack solved these two problems by using an LLM call to turn on a structured data to the a structured data and then creating the knowledge graph. Also, it solved the redundant information in a context window by something named indexing graph. But how does this work? The first step is similar to the naive rag. We segment the data, we chunk them, and we save them into the vector store. Just the information that are being saved into the vector store are not only the raw text, are some other information such as the entity, the nodes, the relationship, everything that we need for the knowledge graph 
and this information would be extracted from LLM, that LLM call that we are using for the pre-processing step. Then using those information, the knowledge graph would be constructed. Now we have the name of the node, then the relationship, the name of the subnodes, and all the information about those nodes, which are the raw text, exist in the vector store. And these two are connected together using this source ID. So when the user is asking something, first of all, LLM extracts some keywords, which here I have the example. It's the low-level retrieval and high-level retrieval. Then those keywords will be passed to the vector store. And these vector stores will retrieve some information. Now we have the chunks. We have the name of the nodes. We have relationship and everything. We search in the knowledge graph. We retrieve those nodes with the relationship. And then all those information will be returned to the LLM context window and LLM generate the final response to the user. If you're curious how to build LightRag, I have a video for you that I explain step by step how to build a LightRag from scratch using the open source library published from the Hong Kong University. LightRag solved GraphRag problem and you could see lots of improvements. However, researchers still are not satisfied and they said, we are still seeing some redundant information in the context window. So they found PathRag. PathRag is really recent and I think it came eight months ago. It's totally based on LightRag. As you can see, we are extracting keywords. We still have indexing graph and vector store knowledge graph and the connection between these two. However, we have this flow-based learning algorithm with distance awareness. If I want to explain it simple, this algorithm is a method that simplifies the graph by removing less important connections. It somehow measures how much information flow passes through each link or relationship. Also consider the distance that how far this information exists from that node, that's a specific node that we are looking for extra information for it. In this way, PassRag removed the redundant information exists in the context window. And then finally, LLM generate the response for the user. Although right now, most of the emphasis for the RAG is on the knowledge graph based RAGs that we can define relationship, we still have another type of RAG, which is important, and that is agentic RAG. I also have a video about agentic rag that I, I explain you step by step how to build an agentic rag from scratch. But what is agentic rag exactly? In agentic rag, we have a supervisor agent and we allow the supervisor to first search the memory agent. This memory agent can be either the naive rag or any other types of rag that I explained until now. And we have a research agent and we can search anything we want. So if those information that we want doesn't exist in our memory agent, supervisor agent use research agent to find those responses. And then those responses would be saved in memory agent for the future. So if in the future you ask the same question, supervisor agent retrieve it from memory instead of using research agent. And that was all. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know if you have any question, ask me in the comment below. I will answer to all of them. Take care guys and see you in the next video.